Hello ladies and gentlemen. So you've decided to get into modding and you need some way to look at code. There's a ton of options out there and some are better than others. But if you need something simple and aren't worried about the software being able to check your code for compiling errors, then look no further than Notepad++. With the link in the description, you can get there real easily. Otherwise, you just Google Notepad++ and it's usually the first option. I've been using this small piece of software for a long while now, and it's easily one of my favorite in terms of light code editing software. People have demanded that I use other programs, but I always find myself coming back to the simplicity of this program. Now to download it, you just go over here to this download link, and it'll take you to this new page. And you have a few options here. The first option you have to make is whether you want the 32-bit or the 64-bit version. I usually just go with the 64-bit version because I'm running a 64-bit operating system. Additionally, you can choose between the installer and the zip package. The difference is that the installer installs it like a normal program, and the zip package is like a self-contained version, so you can put it on a thumb drive if you need to, and always have access to Notepad++. So I'm going to go ahead and just download the installer version, and click Save File, and then we wait for that to download. Now that the download is finished, we're going to go to the File Explorer and go to where our downloads are. Here you can see that the Notepad++ file is right here, and it's the installer version. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and double click it. It'll bring up this user account control thing for me because I'm on Windows 10. I click yes, and then I need to select the language through the installer. I'm doing English because that's what I speak. So go ahead and click OK. And then you just click next. You can read the license agreement if you want to, and then click I agree. And then you need to choose where you want it to actually install. For me, I want it to install into this additional Notepad++ folder, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. Here's some other options that you could select. If you need a different language, you could click on Localization and install the language as necessary for you. I don't need any of the extras because I'm just speaking English, so I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now here's some extra options you can select, but I, they don't really apply to me. So I'm not going to click on any of them. I don't want a shortcut on my desktop, so I always leave that one unchecked. Go ahead and click install, and then it'll go ahead and run. And now you can choose to run notepad right from here. But we don't want to run that one. We want to look at an example of some code and a theme being applied to it. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that and click finish. Now we need to find that code I was talking about. The way to do that is go to where the game is installed. In my case, it's in local disk C, games, Steam, Steam apps, and common. And then here you can see where all of my Steam programs are installed. So what we want to do now is go ahead and click on Space Engineers, and then go to Content, and Data. And here you can see a bunch of SBC files. They might start off looking like plain white boxes to you. So what you need to do is you need to find one. I'm going to open up the cubeblocks.sbc so we can look at that. And then you click open with. And then you might need to click more apps. And then you might have to find it through look for another app on this PC. But once you do that at least once, it'll always show up on this list. Or at least it does for me. So you go ahead and click on Notepad++, and it'll open up the file. And here you go. This is a basic XML that we're looking at. And this is the code that we're mostly going to work in. So from here on out, you want to get used to this. And you kind of want to set up your environment to look at this. What I suggest doing is changing the theme. I like having a darker background so it's easier on the eyes. So what you do is you go up to Settings. And then you go to the style configurator and then here you can select a theme. The theme I like using is actually called Vibrant Ink. And I think it makes a lot of the aspects stand out really well and it's easy on the eyes. However, I don't like having a perfectly black background. So what I do is I click on the background color and then more colors 
And then for me, I set it to 16, 16, 16 for the RGB. And then you click OK, it'll change the background. Additionally, I increased the font size and I made sure that global font and global font size were checked. I increased the size to 14 so that it's easier for me to read and if you're watching these videos on a lower resolution, it'll hopefully be a little bit easier for you to read as well. Make sure you go ahead and click save and close and you should be done there. And you pretty much have Notepad++ set up for looking at XML files. As I said before, there are other options out there that support a bunch of quality of life improvements, but you don't always need them. For example, modding Space Engineers is quite simple in many aspects, especially when it comes to adding custom blocks, sounds, and so forth. You don't need to check if it compiles properly, but if the game can't run it, it'll usually give you a mostly helpful error as to which line is messed up. You just need to be careful when you do a lot of code editing without checking periodically. Completely making a custom single block is easy, but if you made several blocks you want to add and you work on their code all at the same time, there's a chance you can mess up on something and diagnosing the issue can be more difficult when there is more code to sift through. That pretty much wraps up this fancy little program. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to send me a message and I'll get back to you fairly quick. If you like these tutorial videos and like to see more of them, or other types of videos more regularly, be sure to check out my Patreon. As a thank you for helping me out, I try to keep my patrons updated on what's going on and try to provide support to any that need it. That's all for now. Take care.